Oh, well, 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 welcome back. I have a sub today, so you got to make sure that you are in your assigned seat. Uh, sub, since you can hear me on this video, if anyone is not in their assigned seat from what I sent to you, please email me their names and I will reach out to their families uh, within the next five to 10 minutes. If anyone is near the hallway, whether by the door or out in the hallway, you don't need to ask them why. Please just email me their names and let me know. Uh, and I'll call their parents and take care of business immediately. All right, everybody else is in their assigned seats. Let's say you don't have a computer. Well, we can get a loaner Chromebook. I do have that link attached to my sub plan, so we can take care of that in a little bit. But in the interest of getting the class started, just get out a piece of paper and you're gonna be making several T-charts. That's what you're gonna be doing on paper. So nobody do nothing, everybody do this. Here we go, sub work. So to imply is to provide indirect information while to be explicit is provide direct information. Tease out implicit and explicit data from the following text, right? It seems to me that the word implicit is gonna play a big role here and explicit is gonna play a big role here. Ooh, there's that beautiful picture again. Look, Fox, look, an owl. So explicit, direct information, implicit, indirect information, right? I just want you to make sure that you go over here to text and over here, colon, parentheses, and over here, colon, parentheses. Over here, I'd like you to put a semicolon parentheses. Why? Because direct information, you'll just tell people, I'm happy, right? Indirect information is like a wink. I'm trying to tell you I'm happy, plus something else is going on. <laughs> All right, on your market set, go. It's got to be purple. Who can beat me? Who can beat Mr. Surface? Probably pretty easy since he tried to use text. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, I want purple. Whoa, I win. All right. Let's try this out with the book, The Hate You Give. Uh, you will see some coarse or spicy language in this passage. Of course, I'll be replacing that with connotation. This is after the main character, Star, witnesses her friend Khalil being murdered by a policeman. Take a look. We're going to annotate along the way per use. It was so funny, you should have seen it. This is her, her friend. I would have rather seen that instead of Officer 115 or Khalil staring at the sky or all that blood. My stomach twists again. Kenya waves her hand in front of me. Hey, you okay? I blink, Khalil and that cop away. Yeah, I'm good. What could that mean to blink something away? Is that possible even? You sure? You real quiet. Yeah. She lets it drop and I let her tell me about the record. Second round she has planned for Danasia. Daddy calls me up front. When I get there, he hands me a 20. Get me some beef ribs from Rubens and I want potato salad and fried okra, I say. That's what he always has on Saturdays. I think that part's just very cute. He kisses my cheek. Aww. You know your daddy. Get whatever you want, baby. Kenya follows me out, to, out the store. We wait for a car to pass, the music blasting, and the driver reclines so far back that, the only, that only the tip of his nose seems to nod to the song. We cross the street to Rubens. The smoky aroma hits us on the sidewalk and a blue song pours outside. Inside, the walls are covered with photographs of civil rights leaders, politicians, and celebrities who have eaten here, like James Brown and pre-heart bypass Bill Clinton. There's a picture of Dr. King and a much younger Mr. Rubin. A bulletproof partition separates the customers from the cashier. I fan myself after a few minutes in line. The air conditioner in the window stopped working months ago, and the smoker heats up the whole building. Right? Well, one thing we can tell about implicit and explicit information is this bulletproof partition, right? It tells us something about what's been going on. It seems important to sort of the overall of feeling of feeling unsafe and safe um, in these spaces. So let's, let's tease out some data here. All right, the explicit information, and you can just toggle back and forth from the previous page to here, right? The explicit information is They are um, in her dad's 
store. Her dad prefers ribs, potato salad, fried okra. Uh, Kenya asks if she is okay. Now on the implicit side, on the implicit side, we notice that she has experienced trauma. She's trying to forget something. If you are actively trying to forget something, you experience trauma, right? That's going to impact the plot and character. What else? We notice that Kenya notices something is up. Kenya picks up on Star's trauma. What I'd like you to do is to tease out, put a number one and put a number two. And I'd like you to tease out two pieces of implicit information. Please take the time to do that now. You may pause the video. Nice work. All right, I'll be looking for this information here, and I'll be looking for this information here for your points, as well as you taking down the notes for the rest of this. All right, let's try it again with a book called Look Both Ways by Jason Reynolds. This story was going to begin like all the best stories with a school bus falling from the sky. Of course, we got to ask a question, what's going on there? But no one saw it happen. No one heard anything. So instead, the story will begin like all the good ones with boogers. Uh, I am got to say that I don't think good stories begin with boogers, and that's just gross. If you don't get them all nasty, half-baked goblins out of your nose, I promise I'm not walking home with you. I'm not playing. Jasmine Jordan says this, like she said most things, with her whole body. Already, I'm thinking... What what could that mean? What does it mean to say something with your whole body? Like the words weren't just coming out of her mouth, but were also rolling down her spine. She said it like she meant it. She said it with the same don't play with me tone her mother used whenever she was trying to talk to Jasmine about something important for her real life. And Jasmine turned the music up in their ears real loud to drown her mother out and scroll on, scroll on. If you don't take them earbugs, earbuds, earphones, or whatever they call them out of your coconut head, it's going to be me turning up the volume in the bass. And I ain't talking about no music that tone. Jasmine's booger removal warning was aimed at her stuffy nose best friend, Terrence Jumper, TJ. Well, Jasmine called him her best friend, who's a boy, but she didn't have her best friends who were girls, so TJ was her best friend, and she was his. Been like that for a long time since he moved on to Marston Street, three houses down from her. All right, your job is To go through this text here and then go to slide 12 and I like oh boy I like put number one this is going to refer back to the text uh, look both ways I'd like you to put a number two for look both ways and I'd like you to go back and forth between look both ways which is on slide eight and to go to slide 12 and to give me two pieces of explicit direct information. And then please give me one piece of information of implicit data. Excellent. I'd like you to please do the same for this child's book. Where are you from? Please annotate every page as modeled. And then I'd like you to take care of Number one for uh, where I'm from. And give me a second piece of information for where I'm from. And then over here, I'd like you to give me one from where I'm from. One piece of implicit information. As you go along and read this book and everything else, you'll occasionally see uh, T-charts intended for you to tease out explicit and implicit data. This slide is important, so I'd like you to take some time with it.
annotate each page as you go along. And then this is for the total of the book. Mr. Surface, how many for these? Great question. I would like six pieces of indirect of direct information. So one, number two, three, four, Oh, to be young. And then the same, please, over here for indirect information. All right, I'll check your work. And those of you with paper, you just make it work on paper. You may work with an elbow partner. That means you may not get out of your assigned seat, but you may work with someone close to your assigned seat just by moving uh, your desk a little bit to where they are. You may not get out of your assigned seat. All right. Thanks so much. Go get them, y'all.